two things before this video starts. Number one, in the description below, there is a Gleam link to a Neja Prime giveaway and also a 1000 Platinum giveaway. Because we hit 300,000 subscribers, DE reached out to me and said, Hey Flynn, do you want to give away free Neja Prime accesses and free Fuzzant Platinum? So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be choosing free people who sign up to the Gleam giveaway to win a Neja Prime access and then another free people to win 1000 Platinum each. So all you have to do is click the Gleam link in the description below. Then you have to follow me on Twitter, follow me on Twitch, and then you can get an additional third entry if you join my Discord the Gleam webpage will show you how to do all of it and it will authenticate it and everything. So just follow the instructions on that page. And then update number two is that Warframe Beginner's Guide for this year is over. Next year, I'm going to be posting a beginner guide, which is just all the big one long video after Tenocon. Just so then I know for a fact that the information in that video is going to be relevant for the new players who are getting into the game at that point in time. And then I can also account for, you know, something new that may be being added to the game uh, soon after the Tenocon. Because usually after the Tenocon is whenever the big release happens. So if we can wait for the big release ha to happen and then uh, add in the big release content into the beginner guide, that's going to help out way more players. And it's just going to be this one big long video that you can go to and it's going to have timestamps and everything. And that way, I just think it's a lot better. So... Hopefully you guys are excited for that. Uh, enjoy the video. I'm glad to be back. I'm glad that you're watching this video. Like the video if you haven't. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, I'll see you guys, well, in the rest of this video. Goodbye, guys. Hey, guys. What's up? It's Iflin here. And the last time I posted a video was about two months ago. And now that was whenever Heart of Deimos had kind of just released. It might have been out for like a week or two at that point. I had the full intentions of, you know, getting everything that there was within the Heart of Demos, getting all the weapons, getting all the companions, taking these things and then making videos on them and making guides for you guys. But I was logging in every single day because I didn't want to be that one guy who just dedicated one full day of playing to farming up a bunch of mother tokens from the Steel Path bounties or something along those lines. I was logging in every single day and doing things in like bite-sized chunks like my fishing, uh, my hunting, my isolation vaults and of course the steel path bounties to get them other tokens that I needed for my daily standing cap. I was doing all of that and the thing that made me stop playing the game for a period of two months were the amount of bugs and connectivity issues and host migrations that I was getting just whenever I was trying to play the new content that DE had added into the game. So we're in the middle of a global pandemic, so game development is going to be naturally a lot harder because every single developer has to work from home, right? There's going to be bugs that slip through the cracks, there's going to be connectivity issues, there's going to be a lot wrong with a lot of updates that DE put out while we are in uh, this pandemic situation, right? It's going to suck, and I realize me saying situation sounds funny to a lot of you guys. I can't help it. I know. I think it sounds funny too. But um, yeah, like what frustrated me to the point that made me get off the game for two months were the bugs alongside just the tedious grind that we already had, right? I play Warframe for shooting guns, using abilities, killing large groups of enemies, and of course, making meaningful progression towards upgrading my character, be that the focus system, be that the modding system, uh, forming my weapons, something along those lines. That's what I enjoy with in Warframe. Whenever you're forced to do things like hunting, mining, uh, fishing, stuff like that in games to progress like a syndicate or a faction, I really hate that. And whenever you pair that with, you know, bugs, connectivity issues, host migrations, the frustration just starts to add up. And I just wanted to stop playing the game. Now, I didn't make a video uh, saying, you know, yeah, I'm going to stop playing the game simply because there are a lot of negative videos on YouTube right now about Warframe and I didn't want to add on to that voice of negativity because I am mature enough to acknowledge that things aren't going to be perfect in the circumstances that we have right now. If you really know me, like you've been around the channel for a long time, you guys should know that I like to approach my YouTube channel from like an analytical perspective. Like I'm going to look at statistics and figure out what it is that people actually want uh, out of my channel or what is trending within the categories that I sort of want to approach. 
So that's why I've made like, you know, uh, how to farm Rhino like two years in a row, 2018, 2019, simply because people are genuinely searching for updated guides uh, on like an annual basis, right? They're going to add like 2019 or the current year at the end of their search term to find the most accurate and updated information, right? So I was doing my research just to figure out what I could post for Warframe, jumping back into posting videos onto the channel. And honestly, the current trend right now is just bashing the game. That is genuinely it. If you go onto YouTube, you type in Warframe, the first like five videos that are going to come up are just negative uh, game bashing videos and stuff like that. And there's no real like, you know, positivity anywhere or voice of reason or anything like that. Not trying to say that I should be the voice of reason or anything like that. DE definitely deserves criticism. But the thing that I want to point out is that we're in the middle of a global pandemic. Things aren't going to be super easy for, you know, digital extremes to just make something. And the fact that they came forward during TennoCon, like they went out of their way to put together a digital TennoCon, despite having like probably a lot uh, set up or planned for their physical event TennoCon, right? There's probably a lot of planning that goes into TennoCon like the year prior or months beforehand that even uh, actually comes to fruition. So they somehow were able to set up, you know, this, this digital event for us and they mustered together an update and it was really honest with the marketing this time around like you have to give them props where props are due they put together a trailer that was honest and they're like here this is what you're getting you're getting an open world this is going to be in it this is going to be in it this is going to be in it and they were they're really honest and they, they were really transparent about it there was no like oh yeah here is real jack and you're going to get this like a year later like they did with the Fortuna or the 2018 TennoCon and I have to applaud them for that for actually being honest with their with their TennoCon this year. So you might be sitting there like all right Flynn so you got frustrated with the game because there's bugs and you had to do fishing and you had to do hunting but how about you address the real issue now where DE don't seem to be listening to its veteran players or its YouTubers or content creators or whatever you want to call yourself uh, in this day and age. But um, yeah, what I will say about that is that DE are clearly focusing on getting more and more newer players into the game and or improving the first impressions of those newer players to hopefully uh, up that retention rate, right? So to keep more players on, because let's say you're a veteran player and you feel like DE aren't listening to you and you're going to quit the game. I think that for every one veteran player DE loses, there's probably going to be about five new people trying out the game. And let's say three of those people have a good enough first impression that they stick around and invest a decent amount of time and or money into the game. Well, then that works out well for DE, doesn't it? And the thing is, right, if you think about it, they can't always, you know, be trying to get newer players into the game. Of course, it should be a priority, but they can't always prioritize the newer player. Veteran players will get, you know, their kick eventually and you know, it might take a very long time before DE realize that you have to sort of like juggle between the two audience, right? Like you have to constantly have a new stream of newer players coming into your game. And because Warframe has so much content in it, of course, a lot of it is repeat content. Because Warframe has so much content in it, people who get into the game today, if you have never heard of Warframe before, they're in for a treat, right? They're going to experience what me and you experienced a very very long time ago right maybe like two or three years at this point who knows it depends how long you've been invested in warframe for but uh you know they're going to get to the point that we're at someday and if you know de do everything in their power to get as many newer players into the game like they use every sort of trick and tactic or they they released all these new newer player friendly updates and stuff like that. Like they're going to run it eventually and they're going to have to make uh, updates that sort of like progress the progression, if you get what I mean. Like updates like the focus system, updates like, I don't know, adding in new Warframes. I consider that to be like a progression thing. Some people even consider the Hemlift to be a progression thing. Of course, some people view Master Rank as a progression thing. I personally want to see raids back into the game because not only would that add another uh, layer of progression into the game, but it would also encourage me to start playing with people 
who are playing Warframe again, right? Because one of my biggest issues with the game is you can pretty much solo all of the content in the game, but of course that's a topic for another video. But that's one of my biggest issues uh, with the game that the sort of community aspect, at least for me, has been gone for a very long time. So what I'm trying to say is that DE's focus will shift eventually. I think that the multiple releases of open worlds and the big flashy real jack thing that is evidence of de trying to improve that you know new player first impression or new player experience because real jack is this big shiny thing as a newer player that you can shoot for right because whenever we first got into the game or whenever i first got into the game uh like what you shot for as endgame was kind of a gray area and like really it kind of still is because a lot of people consider real jack to be underwhelming or not worth the time of you know anyone really right like i wouldn't sit here and say to you guys oh yeah you gotta go get in your real jack it's so awesome the update is great like because a lot of the missions within real jack are just copy paste like exterminate missions that are sometimes glorified right there's sometimes uh, is a big ship in the middle where you go on it and you kill a VIP enemy or something like that and then you get off and then you basically repeat the same stuff and you have to keep on doing that to get these parts for your real jacks and that gets frustrating and really boring really quickly. So we have these open worlds that sort of have like story bites in them, right? You've got Fortuna and you've got the, you know, the Voxelaris there, the struggles that they go through. You have everyone in Cetus. You've now got Heart of Deimos and the Entrati family. All of these things combined are just going to improve the newer player's first impression because it's like a little cool cinematic thing in a free-to-play game, right? Because we have to go back to the fact that a newer player is going to get into this game expecting pretty much nothing, right? It's a free-to-play game. They think, oh yeah, I'll just pick this here up because I'm bored one night. And then they get into it and they... They, they struggle their way through the first like three or four planets and they get to these open worlds and they're like, oh cool, there's these like cool cinematic things. And that will get them interested in the universe of Warframe because like you have to admit that DE are getting better at uh, making characters that actually have personalities, right? So you have the introduction of Hiriko, you've got, you know, Nora Knight, you've got Lloyd. Like characters like that, those are in my opinion, memorable characters. We didn't have that in Warframe a few years ago, like even with the second dream, the only memorable memorable characters that we have in there are the Stalker and the Lotus. And realistically, those two characters, they don't really have personality, right? Like it's not like they have um, some form of personality that we find super funny. Like the, the Lotus is kind of like an Android, sorry, Rebecca. And then the Stalker basically just doesn't say anything or he's just like a really edgy boy who's controlled by this hun hoi guy we don't really know who he is but well i don't really know who he is some lore guy can tell me all about it in the comment section below i promise i'll read it but um yeah so like de are just trying to world build basically that that's my take on the whole de aren't listening de are doing their own thing right now to improve the first impressions of the game that's evident by the fact of the multiple open world releases it's evident by the fact that real jack is this big uh car on the end of the stick it's evident by the fact that you have the CGI trailer and of course you have the new player experience reworked. But the question is really, when are DE going to eventually pay attention to the older brothers of Warframe, I guess you could say, and uh, give us what we want? Like, why is the why is the youngest child getting all of the attention right now? So that is basically everything that I can say about Warframe for now. Of course, we'll talk about different aspects of the game uh, in future videos that, that go into like specifics and stuff like that. But uh, you're probably wondering like, what is the plan for my channel now that I've started posted again? And the plan is to resume posting Warframe guides and stuff like that because I want to get my website done. If you guys can recall, I posted a update video. I don't know how many months ago at this point, but I basically let you guys know that I've got a website. The link is in the description below. Most of the pages are linked up to one another. It was a lot of work getting all the images up there and uh, linking up all the pages one by one. Uh, all that needs to happen now is the content needs to go up on the website and I want to have a video on every single page. That way, if you read something on 
the website. You also have a video to complement it or vice versa. If you watch a video here on YouTube and you don't understand exactly what I was rambling about in the video, well, I'll have a written guide on my website for you to refer back to just to make it as easy as possible for you guys to get information and to sort of digest this information, right? That's kind of my goal to make uh, getting in the Warframe as simple as possible because, you know, that's what the majority of people look for on Warframe YouTube, on Warframe Google, besides all of the negative stuff and besides the ranting and complaining and stuff like that and the hot takes, you know, like that is always been the goal of the channel to help you guys but then on top of that what i'm also going to be doing is jumping into other games uh this time around i'm also going to be jumping into cyberpunk i'm going to be jumping into godfall and i'm going to be jumping into outriders as well so hopefully you guys are excited for that i'm going to have uh you know godfall i think is the one that comes out first so it's probably going to be godfall we're just going to do some uh playthroughs and stuff like that and i'm also going to resume streaming on twitch i'm not gonna like have a schedule down just yet but whenever i've got a schedule sort of like set in stone it will be on the twitch channel for you guys to see remember i live in the uk so a lot of the times that you see on my twitch channel will be in the uk and that is pretty much it honestly guys um thank you guys for checking out this video if you did uh, like the video if you liked it subscribe for more warframe content godful content cyberpunk content outriders content all that good stuff and uh have a nice day guys